Hi guys, welcome to this solo high score run of the Paramedium and today we're going to be testing out the Truth Rocket Launcher, the newest exotic to be added to the ranks of the Destiny Arsenal. Now I'm running loaded question on my energy and the Ostringer, which is the new menagerie hand cannon. I've got Rocket Launcher reserves on two pieces of armor, Heavy Ammo Finder on the other. I'm using Dawn Blade, bottom tree of the subclass. We have a 210 power handicap, which gives us a score multiplier of 385, which is achieved with Heavyweight, Void Singe, Match Game, and Extinguish. So, the truth dropped this week, and I've been having a bit of fun with it in Crucible. I've been having a lot of fun with it in Gambit, but I wanted... How good is it for stuff like this? Where does it have a place in the heavy the heavy ranks? And I have to tell you it does. Now I probably would run different weapons to do this to be fair. I, the weapons I used performed really well. This is a pretty good run. It was a very easy run actually the paramedium. The the truth took a lot a lot of the the way off, and I have to be honest, the Ostringer is an exceptional hand cannon. I've, I've got Range Finder and uh, Outlaw. I haven't managed to get the role that I really want, which is Outlaw Rampage, obviously. But uh, this is very good. I will farm until I get it. And for me, the Loaded Question is probably the best pinnacle weapon in the game. It, now, you can say that stuff like the Recluse is, is, is better and Mountaintop, and, but all the weapons you could name that are better pinnacle are more, a lot more difficult to get. So, this is this, uh, the load of questions readily available. Anybody can get it. It's done in strikes, done in nightfalls. It's not too difficult to do. And for me, personally, the Reservoir Burst is just, it's untouchable. And in and, and its field, it stands head and shoulders above everything. Now, you could say the pin, all the pinnacle weapons do. I wouldn't say 21% delirium does, but most of them do. But some of them are quite, you know, quite difficult, quite long-winded to get. Whereas the loaded question, you could literally just do your, your strike playlist each week. And you get it in a couple of weeks if you didn't want to grind it. For all there's a grind. I think the thing for me... I think the thing that uh, I noticed with the truth was blast radius for, for a start. Now, we can talk about its tracking. It's got really good tracking. It's not quite the the scary stalker tracking that it had in D1, but it's easily the best tra tra tracking rocket launcher in Destiny 2. But it's blast radius. Now, it, it's blast radius 100%, which I think stuff like the sleepless and stuff is 100%. The rocket launchers I use are normally about 70, 70, 80 max. This seemed 20% more. I, it definitely seemed like a lot more than that. So, you know, it's it's ridiculous blast radius. That's the best way to put it. It's ridiculous blast radius. I actually, I'd, I'd done this run a couple of times just to, you know, test it, you know, and see, 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 what, see how good this was going to be, to be fair. And the first time I killed myself with a rocket launcher, quite simply because I was too close to the, the, the target. And I'm just not used to its blast rate. I wasn't used to its blast radius. Another thing I'm not used to is having three in the mag. I'm so used to just auto-reload. As you can see, I cancelled it there. Now, I did... I wanted the truth to be kind of the main star of this. So every opportunity I got to use the truth, I used it. And I noticed something that it seems like Bungie's done something about the heavy ammo. Now, as you can see, I've got heavy ammo lying at the bottom. I've got heavy ammo. Uh, I've had heavy ammo drop <coughs> from heavy ammo kills. It seems like Juggler, which was the, <coughs> the perk in D1, that this is exactly why I think... I mean, that's, that's exceptional damage for a fusion rifle. But uh, <coughs> Juggler was a, was a perk in D1 where you, you if, if it was on, it was a modifier, not a perk, that if it was on, you could only drop, you'd only drop ammo for the weapons you weren't using. So if you were using primary, you would drop energy or heavy, and vice versa for the rest of them. 
it has been long speculated that it's that it was an intrinsic part of the sandbox in Destiny. And it seems like, I mean, there was a lot of evidence to suggest it was, you know. I have been a big advocate of a change in weapons to drop to drop ammo, but it seems like they 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 might have fixed it. It's cool because <clears throat> heavy ammo finder literally is is some uh, a lot of the time feels like it's just a very pointless a pointless perk to have on weapons because it doesn't it's not predictable it's not you can't see it yourself where right? okay it was like. It was like the ruined wings in Destiny One. They were they were exotic gauntlets that you could get <clears throat> for your Titan that would drop you heavy ammo. And sometimes it just felt like the perks went, yeah, I don't fancy working today. It can happen with armor. It's just the way it is. But it fe felt like the drop rate was so kind of uh, weird that one minute you would you would be dropping heavy, you you know, oh my god, I've got like eight boxes. And the next minute, you could go through a whole encounter and not drop any. But hopefully, they've done something about that. They definitely have. For, for To be dropping on heavy ammo kills, and you can see in the background how much heavy I've got. You know, and this wasn't isolated. This wasn't an isolated incident. So I'm wondering if across the board, that's what they've done. We'll find out in the, in the coming weeks. So... Right, I'm going to address this. I'm not going to keep saying this in my videos. I'm going to address this now. Get it out of the way. Why do I not make more content? There, are, There is more than one answer to that. I still play Destiny daily. I still grind Destiny daily. I just... I've said I've speculated before, and some of you guys, you have been really nice, and you know, I'm I'm not an attention seeker. It's not like please tell me you want to, you love me. It's not like that. I still get that thing that the content that maybe I've got ideas for isn't isn't really good enough. But that hasn't been it this week. There's been other things at play. I, a I've been grinding out trying to get two weapons, especially the Wendigo. Any, any of you guys that follow me on Twitter will have, will have seen me tweet about these things. I mean, trying to get the Wendigo. I'm very close to that now. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do the cheese. Well, that's not strictly true. I didn't do the cheese, and then I joined the Corrupted and got a message from the guys that were in there saying, "Come to the Blind Well." So I didn't want to be that guy to mess it up for them. So I went and done some Blind Well with them, and then they finished, and I still had stuff to do, but I, I just come out and went into the strikes and done it and I want the hush because I love using bows and the hush doesn't seem to be as you know as, as rife at the moment as the wendigo is because there's no cheese for it you have to go in you have to grind it properly so I've got all the kills I've had them you know I, I got them pretty quickly uh, I'm just getting the the the, the medals now uh, this is this is a su subscriber interaction section. <laughs> so I should call it. I need to come up with a better name than that. Do you guys think so? So the Wendigo, the the grenade launcher, which does have some nutty damage. It's got some real damage that you can put out with that weapon. I, I found that I got more percentage for the Wendigo. For not dying, and it actually says it. It says, you know, uh, death will impede the progress of this. Doesn't say that, as far as I'm aware, on the, on the on hush. Do you think? I mean, I, I've went into some games. I've come up with one one percent on, and I've had a really good game. Do you think there's any specifics? Now, it's not just for me, but I am asking for me. It's in case anybody else here is going for hush. If somebody's got any information, leave it in the comments so that we can all get a look and we can all benefit. Because it's really strange. Some some matches I've been putting three, four percent on, and in other matches I'm putting one percent. Doesn't matter Gambit, Gambit Prime. And does do you have to use a bow? Because I've got the bow kills. And I stopped using a bow. So is that why I'm only dropping one percent? Let me know in the comments, guys. Although by the time. 
Still put it in the comments if you know, but by the time this video goes out, I'll probably have tested it myself. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, the whole strike's the same. We're dropping heavy. You know, the truth, the truth, the blast radius, if you, I mean, if you're clever with the blast, you can, you can take out all the ads and the bosses with one shot, you know, if, if, because they all, the thing about the paramedium is, I thought about doing the warden or nothing, because the paramedium, you do have that thing where you can drop shields, you know, you can drop a, a run that's got solar shields, which kind of was happening to me, because, I well, I don't know if it's because it seemed like a deciding, a, a definitive factor because I, I tested it seven or eight times. Every time I changed to a void subclass, I got the taken version with the solar shields, and when I put the solar sh subclass on, I got the void shields every time. So that was like six or seven times I tested it out. So that's why I've come in on Dawnblade. It's not because I think it's the best thing for this. I came in. I don't really use Dawnblade. I never really use Dawnblade. Uh, so it gives it a run out as well. I was more interested in the truth and to be fair, this Ostringer. Because it's it's my new favourite primer. It's just a very, very steady and sturdy damage output weapon. Uh, I, I do want the... I, I want the Rampage Outlaw for reasons I think I might have mentioned or have I just thought about mentioning them am I talking to myself at this point <laughs> uh, yeah I feel like the Midnight Coup has had for for quite some time now I think it's been had like a silent are we going to say nerf it's not really been it feels like it has it feels like it's been turned down if it was an 8 before it's a 6 now and there's been no as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any sandbox readjustments that would have affected, you know, widespread adjustments uh, that have affected the, the Midnight Coup. So I feel like they'd spoke about it before, you know, how, the, and, and it was ages and ages ago, because I remember some streamers saying, well, give us a better hand cannon, we won't use it. You know, give us a hand cannon that actually works in PvE and we won't use it. You know, we're using it because it's still, after all this time, it's still the best option for a hand cannon in PvE. Now, service revolver is just not my cup of tea, but it was just like a... I, I think it was Bungie's way of bringing out a legendary version that could compete with Not Forgotten and Luna. You know, if you can't get them, here's a weapon that, that, that can do the job. Well, Allstringer is basically... It's not that for PvE, because I think it's better than the Midnight Coup. It's, I think it's a much better damage machine. As I say, I've got Range Finder and, uh, and Outlaw, so precision, reload, speed. But it's the range. It's effective at a massive range. Much, much higher. Much higher than the Midnight Coup was. Much higher. As you can see there... I don't want to, you know, everything's void in here now and I've got two rockets. So I am going to have to waste a little bit of time here. If I had more rockets, if I'd have stopped here and seen this, what happens here? I didn't notice heavy dropping there. And even looking back on it, I didn't see it. But a, a brick of heavy has dropped there. So I was kind of cheeky. I shot that exploding box. I think this is where I dropped this brick of heavy, actually, is with these ads. I shot that exploding box, which kind of bounced the Minotaur off the, off the, there's the heavy. I've just caught it now, right there. Uh, I bounced that Minotaur off the platform using the exploding box. Just a, a little thing. I noticed a couple of, a couple of months ago that it was a, a good way to deal with that Minotaur. So as I say, I, this probably wasn't the best strike to test the truth in. I felt, A, it's not, it's not, you know, the warden and nothing, everything's void. So that probably would have been the best one to test it in. But I felt this was more of a challenge. You know, I felt that, and some people might not agree, I know the paramedium is in my top three nightfall strikes. Play, subscriber, subscriber participation section coming up. What is your favourite nightfall 
That's, that's a good question. What is your favorite nightfall? But more to the point. So that's your favorite. Whatever whatever comes to mind is your favorite. Would you say that that is the best nightfall? Not just because it's your favorite, because your favorite could come from memories. You know, I remember me and my mates used to do this, or I've, I've got really good drops here, or what do you think is the best nightfall? Now, it's something, it's a piece of content I've had milling about in my head for months, doing, you know, a top five nightfalls based on, based on uh, a couple of different parameters. And maybe I should ask you that instead. What do you think makes a good nightfall? Uh, that's probably a better one. Hashtag no wrists. That's the worst grenade throw I've ever made. I don't know what I was doing there. I actually didn't expect that Hydra to be there. Yeah, what do you think makes a good nightfall? For me, I would say it's uh, it's the length of the nightfall, the mechanics within the nightfall, boss battle within the nightfall, and the aesthetic of the nightfall, the way it looks and feels, you know, background. For that, I would say... If that was what you were judging it on, I mean, you could add specific loot in there. I can tell you straight away that I th straight off the bat, I can say that it, uh, Exodus Crash is without a doubt the worst nightfall in the game. But uh, let me know what you think. Do you think there are good ways to judge a nightfall? So that be for, for kind of so the, the how long, you know, how much time, how long the strike is, uh, the mechanics within the strike the boss battle, and the aesthetic, the look and feel of the Nightfall. Do you think that's a good way of judging it? If that is, would your favourite still be considered one of the best? So, we're at the boss, so we're going to put a couple of rockets on them, and you can see the damage, two rockets, almost one health bar. I think it's safe to say that the truth can hold its own in PvE. Now, there's a shot coming up in a second, that for me, told me everything I needed to know about how good the truth is in the PvE, in PvE circumstances. Now, everybody will tell you that solos this. Or even that doesn't just solo, anybody does it. And that includes you guys. You guys will probably know that this these sections here with these goblins, they're pretty easy. Nothing really too taxing, too challenging. Make it over here. Such a good weapon. These plates are easy plates. So you just crouch here and you know, as long as as long as that sniper can't see you, he can't hit you. The boss can't hit you if the sniper can't see you. It's these next plates that are difficult, and especially the second plate. So we've put put a rocket on them there. And a rocket on them there. Big damage, so it's, I reckon it's about a third of a health bar. Two, two, no, maybe just, just, just over four fifths of his health. You take down with two rockets. So we're, we're wanting the Minotaur actually here. We got the elite, but we never got the Minotaur. We get him here, and now we're going to move over. So this plate, that plate, it's okay. It's not too difficult. It's this next plate. I, 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 I don't. I wouldn't say I struggle with it, but I recognize it for what it is, which is a very difficult little end section because you there's so much fire coming from such a small area. You know, just that little gap there. That little gap there. There's such a, such a, a focused amount of fire that comes from there, and I always like to be here. You know, I, I very much am kind of a... A head on strike while the iron's hot. I threw in my grenade, and then I start taking a bit of damage from the boss. I'm a little bit worried because it's void. You see all that damage coming in there. Gone every single ab with one rocket. I don't think I've ever done that. So that shot there cemented the the truth as a very good PVE rocket launcher as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to target him as soon as he comes out of here. I think we put two on at the back, two rockets on at the back, and that makes him 
puts him in his headless phase, he teleports to middle and we finish him off with the third rocket. And that's the high score achieved. Two rockets. And then one when he comes down and that's that's it. And that's the run. So just to recap on some of the things that I, I spoke about in, the, in this video. What would be your parameters? What would your, your parameters be for judging what a good nightfall is? And do you think my, the parameters I've suggested, do you think they're very good? Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Your viewership is it's the reason why I do it, guys. Have a bit of faith. The content will, as soon as I've got the, finished the grind for these weapons, we'll get the Wendigo, we'll get all that out. Thanks a lot for sticking with it, guys. Appreciate it, and I'll speak to you in the next video.